days, eight nights, and you can call it eight claims, eight lights. We light a flame for this miracle. Hey, we light a flame for this miracle. Hi, my name is Nisim Black, and uh, I was born in Seattle, Washington. I'm a professional rapper, and I love doing what I do. Rap is uh, the tool that I use and the medium that I use to be able to reach people in an amazing way and to be able to share God's love in the world. I was raised in a completely different life than what I'm living now. As an inner city kid, growing up in the urban neighborhoods, got into gang violence and drugs very early on and had that wonderful opportunity to change my life. I converted to Judaism at the age of 26, me and my wife, we had two children at the time, and thank God, she has blessed us now with six, and we picked up and left America and moved here to Eretz Israel, and we now live outside of Jerusalem in Beit Shemesh. One of the things that inspired me the most about Judaism was the honesty of the story. If you read throughout the Hebrew scriptures, the beautiful, beautiful story and relationship between God and the Jewish people, this constant rising and falling of the people and this constant love that Hashem has for the Jewish people and the inseparable relationship that there is between Hashem, the Jewish people, and the land of Israel. So that very much so inspired me to want to be a part of that relationship, to take hold of it and, and, and to immerse myself in it. And so we make a flame for this miracle. Hanukkah. Who could not be connected to Hanukkah? I feel so so connected. I feel like uh, this is my Chag. Hanukkah really represents being in the darkest and the lowest and the most remote places. I'm standing here, but I can't hold myself. I know I need the help of someone else. I am my brother's keeper. I can use my hand. What connects me most to Hanukkah, and what probably connects all of us, is the wonderful mandate to light the menorah, to light the Hanukkah out and in the open, in front of everyone. It's like David HaMelech who says to Hashem, I will profess your greatness and your kingship before all the kings of the earth. And we are doing this every Hanukkah. We're showing the light and the miracle in the, in the, in the great wonders of what God has done for us, the Jewish people in front of the whole entire world. And it's on display for everyone to see. That is the power of Hanukkah. That with each and every single day that we light the Hanukkah, that we add light, we add more light, it only shows that this flame, which can ignite another flame, without really extinguishing the original flame, it's giving of ourself and the more chesed and the more kindness that we do with each and every day. It will not take away from us, God forbid, but it's only going to give more. And the more light that we spread, the more and more we're able to illuminate the whole entire world. This is Hanukkah, and this is why I love it so much. Whenever we down, he can lift us up. Ain't a difficulty too difficult for us If only we would trust and keep our heads up The sky we can touch, yeah But I feel so out of my zone I feel like I lost my control I feel so out of my zone I feel like I lost my way home, yeah But when it's dark out I can't see, yeah So can you make a light for me? It's hard From Egypt to Babylon, the Holocaust Inquisition would pivot us to the pogroms, yeah from the Greeks and now in Rome, yeah. But we fight back to light that fire. They got a problem, cause this Nishama won't expire. We move it on. We show the whole entire world no fear in us. And so we make a flame for this miracle. So we make it eight days, eight nights. And you can call it eight planes, eight nights. We light a flame for this miracle. Hey, we light a flame for this miracle So we make it eight days, eight nights And you can call it eight flames, eight nights And we light a flame for this miracle Hey, we light a flame for this miracle I'm standing here but I can't hold myself I know I need the help of someone else 
I am my brother's keeper. I can use my hand to be my brother's keeper. We gon' fly away. Not in a million years can six million tears be ignored still. These are arms of steel. King David's shield. Operation Moses, Ethiopian Trojan. He gave the mighty to the weak and the many to the few. In a minute, it was through. Even in the dark, we light it through. So now I give my light to you. But we fight back to light that fire. They got a problem, cause this neshama won't expire. We moving on. We show the whole entire world no fear in us. So we make a flame for this miracle. Hey, so we make it eight days, eight nights. And you can call it eight flames, eight lights. We light a flame for this miracle. Hey, we light a flame for this miracle. So we make it eight days, eight nights. And you can call it eight flames, eight lights. We light a flame for this miracle. Hey, we light a flame for this miracle. Everybody at home sing along. So we make it eight, eight days, eight nights, eight flames, eight lights for this miracle. Hey, so we light a flame for this miracle. So we make it eight days, eight nights, eight flames, eight lights for this miracle. We light a flame for this miracle. Hope everybody's joined the Hanukkah so far. My name is Ron Dermer, and for over seven years, I've been privileged to serve as Israel's ambassador to the United States. I'm honored to speak to Jewish communities across the world who this year are celebrating Hanukkah with Chabad. Now, some people say that all Jewish holidays <clears throat> are the same, that all our holidays can be summed up in three short sentences. They tried to kill us, they failed, let's eat. But the truth is that each Jewish holiday not only has unique foods and customs, but also commemorates a unique national experience. On Passover, we celebrate our freedom, our freedom from slavery in Egypt. On Purim, we celebrate our survival, survival from a plot in Persia to annihilate us. On Sukkot, we remember our simple spiritual lives in the desert. On Shavuot, we remember receiving our people's greatest treasure, the Torah. Well, what about Hanukkah? On Hanukkah, we celebrate Jewish identity. We remember how a small and courageous band of Maccabees took on a powerful empire, not to save their lives or to end their bondage, but to live according to their faith, laws, and traditions. In fact, the Maccabees risked their lives to save their identity. It is precisely because Hanukkah is a celebration of Jewish identity that it is the most public of Jewish holidays. We can have a Seder in the privacy of our homes. We can build our sukkahs in an inner courtyard. But on Hanukkah, we must light the menorah in a place where our neighbors, Jews and non-Jews alike, can see. On Hanukkah, we essentially do what the Maccabees themselves did some 2,200 years ago. We take pride in our faith and in our heritage. We show the world that we are proud Jews. Hi, my name is Tamir Goodman. I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland. I was blessed to play Division I basketball on a full athletic scholarship and professional basketball without playing on Shabbat. Today, I live in Jerusalem with my wife and five kids and I have a sports consulting company that focuses on product development, coaching, and scouting for basketball players around the world. After many years of hard work and training and pushing myself till tears every day, trying to be the best Jewish basketball player that I could be, at the age of 17, I was ranked the 25th best high school basketball player in all of America. I started getting a lot of scholarship offers. I originally committed to the University of Maryland. 
Um, but then I realized if I wanted to stay and play there, I'd have to play on Shabbat. So I actually went to play for a different team, Towson University. And Towson University managed to change the entire schedule for me so that I could play Division I basketball without playing on Shabbat. After a month of intense training on campus, the first game of the season finally started. And then the second game, and then the third game. Third game was in Philadelphia, and we traveled there the day before the game. And late at night before the game, we heard a knock on the door, my roommate and I, Mohammed, who was a Muslim basketball player. And I went to open up the door and I was completely shocked to see it was our head coach. Feeling very nervous, I went into the hallway and coach just said, look, I really want you to be ready to play tomorrow. And I said, coach, I try to always be ready to play. What's going on? What's special? He said, well, we're playing against Villanova. They're one of the best teams in the whole country. The game is gonna be on ESPN. Millions of people are gonna be watching the game. And Tamir, you're starting. And I felt so nervous because my whole life I've been watching Villanova. And now, am I really good enough to play against them? Especially when their point guard is a senior and I'm just a freshman? I came back into the room and I closed the door and I was frozen. I was so scared. I couldn't sleep the whole night. The next day, we got to Villanova. Two hours before the game, usually there's no crowd there. It's just the players warming up. And we were warming up but I just couldn't get my confidence going. I was so nervous. I couldn't dribble well, I couldn't make my shots. I was so scared that I wouldn't be able to play on this level on ESPN in front of all these people. After a little bit of time in the warmups, I looked up in the crowd and I was completely shocked to see there was a Jewish lady there and a young Jewish boy, her son, with a kippah on his head. And I locked eyes with them and I stopped warming up for a minute and I was staring at them, and I noticed that the young boy took a poster board out of his bag, and he lifted up the poster board, and he started writing in Hebrew letters at Villanova, Bruchim Abayim Le Tamir Goodman. He wrote that in Hebrew letters, welcome to Tamir Goodman. And down from the floor, I just thought to myself, wow, who ever saw Hebrew letters in this world famous arena? This is unbelievable. And when I saw those letters, I just didn't feel nervous anymore. It made me feel right at home. I ended up having a very good game, I had 13 points and six assists as a freshman, and the coach came over to me after the game and he said, Tamir, I just wanna let you know that you won the starting spot as a freshman for the rest of the season. And oftentimes people ask me, they say, Tamir, how are you a starter as a freshman in Division I basketball? And I always say to them, it wasn't me, it was the young Jewish boy that wrote the Hebrew letters, it was the Hebrew letters that made me feel right at home and I wasn't nervous anymore. I think this, story has an incredible message for us and Hanukkah, especially this year. Because this year, we don't have our confidence going. We don't feel like ourselves. Because of the coronavirus, all of our confidence has been taken away from us. But this story reminds me, and hopefully it will remind you, just take the first step. Get dressed, put on your uniform, start warming up. And eventually Hashem will send you the blessings that you need to be successful. I wasn't confident. I didn't think I was gonna be able to play well in that game, but I put my uniform on, I went out to warm-ups, and Hashem sent those angels that showed me the Hebrew letters that gave me all the confidence that I needed to move forward and have a great game. So my blessing to you this Hanukkah is, just take the first step. There's so much power in adding just one light, because when we add just one light, Hashem will take care of the rest for us. Happy Hanukkah from Jerusalem, and thank you to Chabad for the opportunity. I'm super excited to make a beautiful cheese board with you today in honor of Hanukkah. Hey everyone, welcome to my kitchen. My name is Hani Applebaum and I am a kosher food blogger, food photographer, and cookbook author here in Brooklyn, New York. This is my cookbook, Millennial Kosher, and I'm all about modernizing traditional Jewish food in a fun and exciting way. Uh, I grew up right around the corner here in, uh, in Brooklyn on the block of 770 Eastern Parkway, the headquarters of the Chabad Lubavitch movement, and just had the most beautiful upbringing, celebrating our traditions and Judaism um, in such a special way. And I'm a mom of five, 
And one of the things that is so important to me is just bringing and gathering my family around the table to celebrate our heritage and traditions through food. Obviously, Hanukkah and the holidays, that's you know the best way to do it. Have your potato latkes and your Hanukkah donuts, but more importantly, the Hanukkah menorah. I was actually born on the fifth night of Hanukkah, so it's really special to me to gather my family around the menorah and light it, but I don't do that in my kitchen. I bring it to the window because at the window is where you can actually spread the light and show that I'm a proud Jew and spread the light of Judaism to the world. And really that's what I'm so passionate about in what I do. I mean, I could be just cooking for my family in my kitchen, but I want to spread that to everyone else because it's so important to me that everyone gather their families around the table to celebrate our heritage and our traditions. And really that's what the redemption mindset is all about. Not keeping it to ourselves, but spreading it out to the world. Uh, so with that, I would love to get started with you to make a beautiful cheese board. A cheese board is that snacking, grazing board where you gather around with everybody and sit around the table and everybody kind of snacks together. So it's really that perfect kind of uh, appetizer for any kind of holiday meal. One of the heroines of the story of Hanukkah is Yehudit, who was known uh, for luring the Greek general with wine and cheese. So we're going to make a red wine fig jam and a beautiful cheese board to celebrate. So let's get started. Okay, we're gonna get started making our red wine fig jam. So just use a small saucepan here. I have eight ounces of dried mission figs that are roughly chopped. You wanna remove all the stems. One cup of dry red wine. Goes really nicely with the cheese. Now we're gonna peel a couple of strips of orange zest. You can use lemon zest, you can use grapefruit zest if you like. And my trick is I take a couple of cloves and I pierce it right in there. This way, they're not floating around your pot and you have to look for them. I'm gonna add a cinnamon stick in there and also some star anise. The figs are quite sweet in and of themselves, so I just add a little drizzle of honey. You can add any kind of sweetener you like, maple syrup, brown sugar, all work well. Okay, we're gonna give that a little stir and let that simmer for about 20 minutes until most of the liquid is absorbed. And then if you want, you can uh, blend it with a food processor to make it a little bit more jammy or you can have it be a little bit more chunky. It's up to you. Okay, we got our jam going and now we're gonna start with the cheese. There's actually a kind of a technique to building the perfect cheese board and that is using a different assortment of cheeses. So the rule is something old, something new, something goat, and something blue. So let's look at what we have. Something old would be like an aged cheese, such as Parmesan, cheddar, Gouda. Something new would be a fresh cheese like ricotta, fresh mozzarella, or feta, which is what we're using. Something goat would be a goat cheese, which we have right here. And something blue would be like a blue cheese, except I usually find that most people don't like real blue cheese. So what I like to use is Camembert or Brie, which have a moldy rind. So it's kind of like a moldy cheese, but not that moldy. First, I want to show you what I do with my goat cheese because it's really fun. You can roll it in chopped nuts, uh, dried fruit, uh, fresh herbs, but I like to roll it in everything bagel spice. How fun is that? And I'm just going to kind of roll it pressing down on the spices to adhere to the cheese. I also like to do different shapes and different colors. So we have you know, the yellow cheddar and the Parmesan is a nice triangle. So this just gives nice visual element to the board as well. And it's also really nice to slice into your cheese. Just makes it more inviting. Nobody wants to be the first person to slice into it. So for the feta, it's a little bit more moist. So I put it on a dish and I want to drizzle some good quality olive oil over that. If you want to put some fresh herbs, you can do that. A little bit of lemon zest, also nice. Uh, but you know what we'll do? We will add a little bit of olives to that. So that's another uh, thing about building a board is thinking about the different flavors. So you want something sweet, something salty, something sour, something bitter, just to hit all the notes on the palate. Our cheese is in, we're gonna put out some fruit, some crackers. I have some beautiful vine tomatoes over here. Grapes, grapes are always nice on a cheese board. Okay, we have some dried dates here, medjool dates. I have some beautiful oranges. Love honeycomb with cheese, so, so amazing. So I'm gonna stick that right on here. 
And we have our red wine fig jam that we made. I actually pulse this in the food processor so it's nice and jammy, as you can see. You know, you wanna go rustic with this. Nothing too perfect. Just kind of let everything flow. Let's get some pickles on here. I love these cornichons. Really crunchy, nice texture. That's our really perfect on a board as well. I have some dried apricots. Kind of want to fill in all the spaces and really have it nice and full. And some pecans, cashews. We have some beautiful blackberries. And of course, crackers. Can't forget the crackers. Look around your board, fill in any gaps that you might have. Okay, and don't forget your cheese servers. So just stick them on the board so everybody can dig in and serve. Thank you so much for joining me in my kitchen in Brooklyn today. I hope you enjoyed building a cheese board with me and I hope you'll make one for your family too. Happy Hanukkah, everyone. Und das wird noch unterstrochen, wie gesagt, in der Tag von Hanukkah. Als er zugekommen, der Mitzvah von Neres Hanukkah, was sehr Mitzvah ist doch, als machen lichtig und machen lichtig als besser, besser mit Bachut in den Neffen, als das macht lichtig sei bei sich in Huis, in Besser. Und das macht lichtig eher bei gut, was ein Kescher gehasse Ort, a viele in der Zeit von Finsterkeit von Golos und in der Welt, macht a jed lichtig durch Idischkeit, durch Nern Mitzvah Vetero Ehr, ist a die Lichtigkeit, darf man nicht haben, mehr keine Mittel. Durch Lichtigkeit und viel nach Lichtigen Leben, da ist mir mein Erzähler der Finsterkeit und der alle nicht gewünschene Sachen, was sie seine verbunden mit dem Golos und mit dem Jezer und mir bringt der Rob der Lichtige Gejule. Und eine zweite Ablehnung, was ihr mir Chanukko geben, jeder in Sivis Hashem, und den ganzen Zivis Hashem, als Bescheid mit viel durch den Mäbischen Schliches. Und es ist aktiv und mit tut den Zivis Hashem, wie viel man darf tun, darf man sich damit nicht begnügen. Und sie darf sein, der Meil in Bakedisch. Er darf machen noch mehr Lichtigkeit und noch mehr Chlore. Die Lichtigkeit von Telo mit zwei Seho, wie wir selbst in der Mitte von Zinden, Neres Hanukko, als Heintoten gezunden zwei Lichtler, AVP, Chotscha Fiebe, mit ein Tag Frie, hat man mit keinem Gewinn der Mitte in der Fulster Moss, mit ein Lichtigkeit, mit ein Lichtler, mit der Lichtigkeit von ein, von ein Lichtl sorgt der Rebestellung geht Keach und sorgt dann jeder von Zivis Hashem und jeder Iden, als jeder Tag soll er zugeben noch mehr Lichtigkeit. Auf der Lichtigkeit von mit der Tag früher und die Chance erhält ihn wachsen in den Zoll von seinem Tag ist auch noch mehr sicher, als er darf wachsen in sein Ton in verspreiten Lichtigkeit und das alles wird noch mehr zuheim, als er noch ein Neues Ziel an der Rebestelle den Gichen beweisen, jeder von euch und jeder von uns und dem ganzen jüdischen Volk den Neues Ziel 
ומת פראוון דה חנוכס בייס המקדש השלישי. That you were one of the badniks of Hanukkah, that every day you must add something. The first day you are like, like, uh, saying clean, bless, a clean blessing, and nevertheless, every day after that, immediately, you are adding an additional candle. Mm-hmm. And that will be so to all, all the year around. Yeah. Thank you very much. No, to, yes. to charity for your mother. That the God Almighty bless her and be happy. Mar Silvan Shalom, the Shavosh Havrata Hashmal be Israel. Lavoy called her in Yadi, the Israel and his fever, the Mahmad he or. He or Shavin Hanukkah, ויום אחר כך שני ימים, אלא מיום ליום, וזה בשביל ההשרפה. אין לו כסף, אבל תהיה דבר ראשון כבר מזומן. הברכה והצלחה. My name is Rabbi Y.Y. Jacobson, Yosef Yitzchak Jacobson. I grew up in the Crown Heights section of Brooklyn, at the feet of the Lubavitcher Rebbe of blessed memory. Today, I live with my family in Rockland County in Muncie, New York, and I've had the privilege over the years to travel to communities across the globe and share some of the light I was privileged to absorb from the Rebbe. I still recall that Shabbat afternoon. It was Hanukkah, 1991. I was a yeshiva student. It was 1.30 p.m. The Rebbe came down to the main sanctuary, 770 Eastern Parkway in Brooklyn, and he began his weekly fabring in his public address and gathering to the thousands of Hasidim and disciples that were gathered. But I still recall the opening of that address, Hanukkah 91, because it was so rare. And the Rebbe said, when somebody is passionate about something, he or she will find that passion everywhere. Any person they meet, any circumstances they encounter, any experience they have will somehow trigger that passion. They will find conscious or unconscious associations because this is what their mind is immersed in. They will find this passion everywhere and anywhere. And the Rebbe said, for us, the Jewish people, Our deepest passion is our yearning for Mashiach, our craving for redemption. We yearn for a world that is filled with divine, infinite consciousness, where humanity is one, where each and every single one of us has the ability to transcend our toxicity and be aligned with our divine, infinite core of love and light. And when Hanukkah comes, the association is immediately there. We're yearning for a world that's filled with divine, spiritual light and love. How do I tune into that consciousness, the Rebbe said? He said, look what happens when you kindle a flame. He says, with most material things in our world, it's a zero-sum game. If I give you $100, I don't have those $100. If I give you shares in my business, those shares are now yours and not mine. But If I have a flame and I use that flame to ignite another flame, nothing of my light is diminished. On the contrary, my light has just increased. There are two ways in which we can operate on a daily basis. One is a more restrictive form of consciousness where I believe there are only limited assets and we're all competing. I walk around with a restricted state of consciousness, being very cautious about what I'm going to share and what I'm going to get. I have these walls of insecurity and fear that I feel I must always carry with me in order to protect 
my fragile ego. But the Rebbe said, Hanukkah tries to teach us another way of living. Instead of looking to the world for validation and for love, you become the source of light. I must challenge myself and ask myself the question, can I at every single moment become a source of love, a source of light, a source of hope, a source of healing to everybody around me? When people see me, when people see you in the street, in the store, wherever it is in the office, they know immediately this is a flame from which I can kindle my flame. Because when I and you become that person, not only does our light not get diminished, on the contrary, we receive more light and more love as we flood the world with love. Shalom. My name is Rabbi Yitzchak Muli, and welcome to my studio. I'm originally from Melbourne, Australia, and now I live and work in Hillside, New Jersey. I'm also known as the Pop Art Rabbi, and wonderfully, I carry these two titles of rabbi and artist. You know, one thing I've learned along my journey as an artist is that there are three basic elements, three basic ingredients to every piece of creativity, every piece of expression. Step one is what you say, the subject matter of any form of expression. And really that's a reflection of yourself, a reflection of your soul, reflection of your circumstance, reflection of your upbringing, the things that really matter to you most, that you choose and want to share with others. The next step is how you say it, how you choose to convey these ideas. There's music, there's dance, there's poetry, there's canvas and paints, and many other things. And then there's the third element of how you share it with the world. Once it's done, once it's complete, now what do you do with it? The incredible lesson that we learned from Hanukkah and from the menorah is to look at things from a different perspective because the beautiful message of the menorah, the unique idea of the mitzvah of menorah is that we take the menorah and we light it in the window, we light it outside. It's the one mitzvah where the Torah tells us how to go about it. We're not showy people, we're people of the book, we're, we're, we're quiet about our mitzvot. It's not about publicizing. But the mitzvah of Hanukkah is to do it outside. Why? Is light over darkness. It's to shine the light, the, the energy of the menorah out to the outside. And really that third element of creativity, of what you do with it, now that you've had something, how do you share it with others? How do you share it with the world? Really changes, for me at least, has changed the way I look at creativity, the way I look at my process. And that the end result of sharing it with others defines step one and two. And this idea really is the idea of Geula, the idea of redemption. Is that in redemption, in Geula, everything that we have is still there except that it's revealed. The world is revealed in its purity, in its essence. That's the idea of creativity. The idea of creativity isn't to create for yourself, to do for yourself, but it's really to share. It's to share with others. And that's my duty, that's my responsibility, that's my opportunity, that's our opportunity, is to take the gifts that we have, to take the abilities that we have, to take the creativity we have, to take the expressions, so it's what we say and how we say it, and we're all unique. But it's about sharing it with the world. It's about taking the Gola mindset. The work itself is not complete until it's shared with others, until it impacts others, until it creates an opportunity for others to get involved, to others to engage. Because together, we can make the world complete. Happy Hanukkah. My name is Beryl Solomon, 
and I am 32 years old. I live in Montreal and I'm a Balchuva. That means that I was not born into a religious home. And I have an incredible Hanukkah story that I want to share with you and everybody watching. A Hanukkah story that changed my life and that changed my children's lives and my children's 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 lives. And all started with a menorah. It happened when I was right around my age of bar mitzvah that I was on a cruise ship with my family. And it was Hanukkah, the first night of Hanukkah. And we get off of the cruise ship and we go into an island. And as we're getting off the boat to go on our adventure, a young man, not much older than my eldest sister at the time, comes up to my father and says, Happy Hanukkah, sir. Are you Jewish by any chance? My father said, yes. He said, I want you to have this Hanukkah menorah. And my father said, wow, that's so nice. My father asked him, how much do you want for it? And the young child said to my father, you don't have to pay me. All I want from you, sir, is that you promise that you will light it tonight and every other night for Hanukkah. My father took the menorah, he was touched, and we went about our business at the island, and we came back at the end of the day, and he stuck it in his suitcase. And as we're sitting around at the dinner table that night, for anybody that's ever been in a cruise, you know there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tables on every deck. And we're sitting at our table, and my little sister reminds my father, she says, Dad, it's the first night of Hanukkah tonight. And my father says, wow, I remember, we got a menorah, go get it. And I went with my sister to go get the menorah, and we brought it to our table. And we were very scared to light it, because on a cruise ship, you're not really allowed to light. But we did it anyways. And we put together any blessing that we knew, we remembered any song that we could remember, and we lit the menorah. And something amazing happened. Within a few minutes, we saw on the top deck that somebody else had also lit the menorah on their table. And then within a few minutes, we see another table right next to us light their menorah. And then again, and again, and again, another one, and another one, and another one, and another one, and people kept on lighting the menorahs until it seemed that the entire cruise ship deck was completely lit with menorahs, Jewish people that were hiding until this moment, all revealed themselves with the flame of Hanukkah. And my family was so touched, we felt like we lit up the darkness. And that is the magic of what Hanukkah is about. The magic of a candle is when you light another candle with your candle, not only does your candle not get diminished, but you could illuminate an infinite amount of candles. And that one moment left such a profound impact on me. Today, thank God, I'm married to a beautiful wife. I have three beautiful children. And it all started with a little bit of light on Hanukkah. And I try to take that light into everything I do. I'm a businessman first and foremost, and I try to infuse that into my business. I try to touch every customer with a little bit of light. Jewish or not, we have a mission into this world. But it all started with the magic and the light of Hanukkah. everyone. My name is Aviva Jablon. I'm from Westlake Village, California. I'm a proud child of Sea Kids Brigade Savos Hashem. I've always dreamed of a perfect world where there's only good. Aviva, you want to come play dreidel with me? I don't know. Please, please, pretty please. You're fine. Hey, I just realized that my dream of a perfect world can actually happen. I just did it. 
Even though when I wasn't in the mood of playing, I still went out of my way for others. These little acts of kindnesses are what creates a perfect world. A Moshiach world. Yay, I got a Gimel! Yay! It's just like a menorah. Just like we add one more candles each night of Hanukkah, we need to keep adding our acts of kindnesses and goodness. I just realized the power and potential I have by helping others learning Torah and doing mitzvot. I am turning my world into a Moshiach world. Aw, oh, I got a shin. As a child of Sabot Hashem, I am part of a global network of thousands of Jewish children who are trying to make this world a Moshiach world. When I know that I'm not alone, it makes it so much easier and brings Moshiach faster. When the whole world will be the perfect world that I've always dreamed of. This Hanukkah, let's go beyond the flame. Let's go beyond the flame. This Hanukkah, this Hanukkah, let's go beyond the flame and unleash our unlimited potential. Light up the world with goodness and constantly grow. Constantly grow. This Hanukkah, let's go beyond the flame and light up the whole world with goodness. Unleash our infinite potential. Flood the world with love, light, and goodness. Have your moment. Have your moment of redemption. Have your moment of redemption now. Let's have our moment of redemption right now. <laughs>